All right, well, you're ready. All right. The final book club meeting. I know Chris is about to be awkward for you because you've never, you're, you don't know what's happening. But. So what do you think? Should we do like a, a quick like a spiel about like the last two chapters? Like what chapter oh, 11, what three chapters? The plot, the plot oh, yeah, twist sure. in the last chapter. Oh my gosh, even when he freaked out. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I've seen that. Why he doesn't drink? He doesn't really drink that much. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. That, like, so now we know that's what happens. I was in the car yeah, like an ass. when I read yeah. that part and I was like, no way. Chris is probably like, wait, which chapter are we talking about? That was chapter, uh, chapter 18. 18 yeah. yeah. Did you read chapter 19 though? Yes. The what? Yeah, and they found out the plot twist about Meredith. Oh my god. They completely let us off straight because we thought that here we, we are, we thought we thought it was Eliza. Eliza. Eliza and hit those, and we blend in like, like accused of a lot of, it had to be Eliza. It turned out it was like Meredith who no one, we forgot about after the whole, she was questioned about the about her necklace being in the bottom of the pool. Exactly, that's like, dumb. Awesome. But then, but then, like they also, and she also too. kind of brought it back. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. But then it was also brought back. Maybe it was Topher who they owed money to, because they had said that it, like that that he had yeah. paid the money. But then the thing was, is there was money for it. Because oh, yeah, Meredith stole his the money. So Meredith stole his money, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, because is, oh, okay. the money yeah, was supposed to be for the drugs. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she's going to dip, she's going to leave town with the money. Because she had said, yeah, because remember she, she stole, said she was going to get there was an altercation with Greg and Meredith because Greg was pissed because Meredith took the money. And then he was going to hit her and then 80 pushed him. Mm -hmm. He but he was supposed to use that money to pay Topher off right. because yeah. he had he had said I don't have the money for the drugs. Yeah, mm -hmm. that makes sense. And that that's where Topher. Topher comes in about it because he owes money for the drugs that he that Meredith took. Mm -hmm. Oh right. my gosh, I can't wait to find out the aftermath. But so now they're not. He's like, you better cancel the Uber. I don't know why. Yeah. Well, to cancel the Uber because that, that was when the ride. they canceled the ride because that that's when they were questioning. Oh, because Ray's all written out because they called the detectives. So yeah, they better cancel so. the ride, the detectives are. Okay, okay, so who wants to start? I, I can start. Okay. Ray's and O'Neill showed up at August House 20 minutes later, taking us into the library and interviewing each one of us in turn, or trying to anyway. The Kendricks called their lawyer more or less immediately. Meredith refused to say anything until her parents, both corporate litigators, made their way out to the vineyard from Connecticut. The police put her in the back of their squad car anyway, a flash of red hair and a haughty expression. Aidy was already sitting in the back seat, eyes trained resolutely forward. You ready? All they asked once they were gone, nodding at her sedan in the driveway. It felt like lifetimes since she scooped me up at the ferry this morning, like it had happened to someone else altogether. Yeah, I agreed slowly. Then at the last possible second, I shook my head. Actually, I said, two minutes? There's something I should do first. Alde raised her eyebrows with an expression that pretty clearly indicated she didn't want to stick around this place for any longer and we had to, but all she did was gesture up at the house. You know what, Michael? She said, be my guest. I grimaced remembering that we'd never actually made up after a fight in the library. Thanks, I said, knowing the word was totally insufficient for the circumstances. Two minutes. I found Eliza reading in the hammock, which had somehow survived last night's storm. Even after everything that had happened, she still looked like all I'd ever want. She still looked like all I'd ever wanted, lying with an arm tucked behind her head in shorts and a Fleetwood Mac t-shirt. I had to remind myself that I didn't actually know her at all. I hovered at the edge of the yard for a moment, gathering my courage. Then I cleared my throat. I should have known you still weren't actually gone, she said, barely bothering to look up at me. You're like a possum or something. Some animal that lives in someone's alley and eats their garbage, who's always on the lookout for something rotten. Yeah, 
I admitted, forcing myself not to fake it. That pretty much sums it up. Eliza was quiet for a moment, running the corner of her book, cover back and forth underneath the thumbnail. None of us wanted this to happen, you know, she said softly. I mean, you've made it pretty clear that you think we're a bunch of remorseless country club monsters, but we were real friends once upon a time. All of us were. My brothers, Meredith, Greg, she shook her head. Haven't you ever hated your friends a little? She asked. Haven't they ever said or done something that made you think you'd be better off without them? I swallowed hard, trying not to glance in the direction of the driveway. Okay, does someone else want to read it? Yeah, sure. Do we need a pizza break? Renee, are you hungry? Uh, I can wait a little bit. Okay, just double cool. check into that. Sure. You're not too hungry to keep reading the sir. Or you don't have to read it if you're too tired to want to. Yeah, but I think okay. what Aidy did wasn't self defense, though. Yeah, it was. Because she was protecting. Oh, yeah, she was protecting her. So I don't know why she would get in trouble. True. But yeah, I'll go ahead and read it. Better get a lawyer. I saw the hard time. Yeah, I said again. <clears throat> then, Eliza, I ran a hand over my job. We both know I owe you one hundred and dollars. Eliza let out a sharp, brittle laugh. Oh, listen, she said, looking at me with some pity. Please don't. No, I said, I mean it. For last night, obviously, I was drunk and I was amped, and I had no idea what I was talking about, but that's no excuse. No, she agreed with me. It's really not. I could feel myself shriveling under the weight of her obvious contempt, but I made myself keep going anyway. It had been more than just small behavior, the way I treated her. Whatever fucked up stuff had happened that had whatever fucked up stuff had happened in this house the last couple of weeks. I didn't want to be someone who added to it. That's not all I wanted to say though. I wanted to apologize for just my actions in general. For being so distracted by the person you were in my head. That I couldn't see the person you actually were. The person you were trying to show me. <clears throat> you deserve better, and I'm sorry. I saw surprise flicker over her face at that. For a moment, I thought it might have gotten through. That we'd be able to part ways as, if not exactly friends, and at least not enemies. Well, she said, her voice taking on that bright, cheerful, patriarchal quality that I knew meant I was headed for danger. Whatever image of me you've got in your head now, you should try to forget about her. She smiled and it looked like a razor blade. I'm going to forget about you the minute you leave. I nodded. I deserve that, I told her, but I hope we see each other again. I don't. The lesson's tone was final. It violated me. Ooh, ice. <laughs> I looked at her for another minute, then turned to go skirting back around the side of the house to avoid the Kendricks and the police. I was just making my way through the garden, which was bursting with end of summer produce the Kendricks wouldn't be here to eat. When I heard the sound of someone sucking in a ragged breath, I turned and there was a dance around one of the picture houses on the side porch. His head dropped so I couldn't see his face. Hey, I said, you good? Jasper snapped up right like the soldier being unexpectedly called to attention. There was an expression on his face I didn't recognize. Vulnerable and a half wide. In fact, it almost looked like he'd been crying. Dude, he said, hearing something plenty from his throat. How the fuck are you still here? He was still smiling as he said it. He pulled himself together just like he always did, forever an illusionist. But this time, I didn't believe the truth. I don't actually know, I admitted sheepishly, sheepishly, and I swear I'm going to get out of your face for real in a hot second, but seriously, are you okay? I watched as he drew himself up, his mouth opening to launch into what I knew would be assurances about how fine and okay he was, but then he just sort of said, you know, he said, his voice so quiet I almost didn't hear him, he wasn't always such a bad guy. For a moment, I truly had no idea who he was talking about. Then it clicked. Greg, I asked, surprised. Yeah, Jasper.
chest drawer, left his face roughly in the back of his hand. Look, I know everybody thinks he was a total shithead, and don't get me wrong, I, did, I hated his fucking guts this last year. But we were kids together, you know? Like my little first fucking memory is us catching hermit crabs together down on the beach. He shook his head. I don't know what happens to someone who told me when they're just gone like that. Page. I did read two pages. Oh yeah, how about does someone else want to read or? Uh, read. I'll probably do every other page. Sure. I nodded slowly, wanting to say the right thing to confront him, and not sure exactly what that might be. I thought again of them all growing up side by side, the Kenderton, Greg, and Meredith, all of them born into these long golden dynamics. Dynasties. None of them dynasties. Mm -hmm. None of them having any reason to think it would ever end. Jasper was nothing if not a prince of privilege, and in a lot of ways it was hard to feel sorry for him. Still, at the end of the day, his best friend from when he was little was lying dead in a morgue somewhere. Mine was waiting for me out in the car. I'm really sorry, Jas. Yeah. Well, he shrugged, lifting his chin in a way that was almost defiant. Shit happens, right? Shit does. I smiled a little half-hearted. Can I ask you something? I said. It, it had been eating at me since the first night I'd gotten to the vineyard. An unanswered question at the back of my mind. All last year, back at the dorms, why didn't you tell me about what was going on with your dad? I'm not embarrassed, Jasper said immediately, his voice fierce. Whatever my brother might think, I'm loyal to his family, but there's family. to his, to this family. But there's some shit in life you don't really want to talk about, you know. Not every not even not even with the people you're close to. He glanced at me sighed long, smirked a little. Not that it made a difference to you and Miss Singh. You're, you guys dug up the dirty, the dirt on everybody, whether they wanted you to have it or not. That's true. I cringed at that. A prickly heat creeped up the back of my neck. I wanted to explain to him that it wasn't what Haldi and I had been trying to do, that we only wanted to help. But even as the excuse formed in my head, I knew it wasn't entirely true. There was a part of me that had represented, resented, represented, resented, resented the Kendricks, whether or not I admitted, to, remit, uh, admitted it to myself as part of me that had wanted to prove they weren't as perfect as they seemed. We stood there in silence for a moment, both of us deep in our own heads. I, I spent, I'd spent a lot of time over the last few days wondering what other secrets Jasper might be keeping from me, if he was really the kind of person I thought. But if anyone here had spent his, spent his vacation, hell, his entire life playing a long, complicated game of lies. It wasn't him. I took a deep breath. Listen, I said in the spirit of putting it all out there. There's some stuff I haven't been honest with you about. Jasper cleared his throat one more time, looking at me with some interest. Oh no. I shook my head. I'm at Bartley on a full scholarship, I confess. Back in Boston, I lived with my mom in a two-bedroom apartment above our landlady. I didn't even have an internship this summer. I needed to make as much money as I could, so I worked doubles at Star Market six days a week. I'm not like the rest of you guys. I never have been. I completely broke. Jasper gazed at, gazed at me for another moment. Then he nodded, dude, he said, I know. I gasped at him, at him. I gave. I knew it. Gave at him. You what? 
All right, do you want to read now, Renee? Uh, sure. For the next two pages, and then Jasper sat. Me or Cassie can finish it off. Sure. Jasper sat back. Jasper sat back down on the edge of the porch. Relax, Linda. He said with a smile. You talk a good game and everything, but it's kind of obvious. It is. I opened my mouth to ask him how I, I even, I given myself away, how I could possibly keep it from happening again if other people knew. Then I realized it was beside the point. Jasper rolled his eyes. This isn't a Brad Pack movie, dude. Nobody cares about that shit but you. I didn't think that was true. Not really. But just for a moment, I wondered what might have happened if I'd given him the chance to prove me wrong. I glanced over my shoulder in the direction of the driveway. I should go, I finally said. Jasper nodded. Sure, he said, flat, flattening his palms against the floor of the porch and leaning backwards. He was already turning into himself again. Easy going, casually bulletproof. I'll see you back at school, yeah? Yeah, I said, totally. Though the truth, I had no idea if he had, if he would or not. My scholarship wasn't a sure thing. If I didn't head back to Bartley, I doubted our friends would survive. It was entirely possible we'd never see each other again. Sorry, Sorry, Yeah, I know where I am. I know where I am. I didn't what say. I didn't say anything like that, though just lifted my hand in the await before I headed around the front of the house. Holiday was waiting in the driveway, sitting on the hood of the sedan with her feet up on the bumper. She looked tired, a little bit ragged, but she also looked satisfied as all hell. <laughs> so, she said brightly, hope, hopping down the sliding, hopping down and sliding behind the wheel. How was your vacation? I snorted. Wasn't all bad, I said, collapsing into the passenger seat. Holiday glanced behind her as she put the car into gear, pulling down the long, winding driveway. Oh no, she asked with a grin. Which parts made it especially worth it to you? The capital, the capital crime or the public <laughs> humiliation? The fried clams, I deadpan, I deadpan and Holiday laughed. The sun broke through the clouds just as we pulled out in, onto the main road. The damp pavement gleaming in front of us. I rolled my window down, the cool breeze on my face helping to clear my head. I owe you an apology, I told her. Holiday nodded. I mean, yes, she said with a smile. You do. But all, by all means, please proceed. Not just for what happened last night, though, make no mistake, I was a giant douchebag and I am really fucking sorry, but also for for just kind of disappearing the face of the planet for of the last few years. Oh, they shrugged. We both disappeared, she pointed out. Luckily for us, the universe has a way of forcing correcting, she said, grin. she grinned. You know, with like a casual murder. <laughs> I think that was probably their real motive, I agreed. Oh, for sure. I couldn't have figured any of this out without you, I told her. I mean, I didn't figure any of this out. You did. I feel like I was wrong about everything, everyone and everything from the last second I got off the ferry. Oh, they shrugged. You're right about one thing, she, she admitted. As profoundly as it pains me to admit, I was jealous. Oh, there's oh, well, there's two more last pa two more pages, so you can. You want to go, and then I'll read the very last page. Oh no, you can finish it off this one. So, uh, okay. I just want to say, so it's like, the, how kind of bugs me about how, like, because she was the reason, she was the yes. one that accused Eliza. Thank you. And 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 God and said, yeah. Because she was the one that dug up the dirt. It wasn't Lyndon's fault, but Lyndon was messed up because that is abusive kind of though, uh, going about and. Uh, uh, going through someone's texts. I mean, that's actually considered, I mean, I, I went through therapy and has learned about abuse, abusive relationships, and they said that that's one of, that's a sign of abuse going, 
reading going through your significant other's text. But also, it's abusive. But also, if there had been like a scene in his mind, he would have believed yeah. it. You know, he could have just um, backed him up in the beginning and been like, "Oh no, these guys are great." Like, but kind of like if he had said earlier, he was like, "No, I was jealous of the Kendricks and stuff." So that's why he wanted to believe it. You know what I mean? Like when all they brought up evidence, he was like, yeah. "Oh my gosh, it could be true." You know what I mean? There's just a lot of series of coincidences that all like she said she pretty much threatened if he threatened Greg before the night yeah. before, right yeah. before. I mean, that's a huge coincidence. Right, but like Lyndon said yeah. at one point, it was so circumstantial at the end of the day. Yeah. It wasn't actual proof, like like later on with Meredith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, really so sorry. honestly? Honestly? <laughs> I was jealous, honestly. Oh, oh I was jealous, 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 honestly. Not because I'm desperate to bone you, she clarified oh. quickly. Even when I always get the best ones. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to gonna, I'm gonna, uh, 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 edit that so part off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh my God. not because I'm desperate to bone you. <laughs> she she clarified quickly. Even as my heart did a funny thing inside my chest. But the truth is, I missed you. All those years we weren't really talking. And I liked hanging out with you again. I guess there was a part of me that was worried that if you got into you with Eliza, that would be over. She grinned. Lucky for me, Eliza hates your fucking guts now. Fuck you, I said, but I was laughing. She definitely does, though. Oh, for sure. <laughs> because of holiday. <laughs> right? We were approaching the ferry dock now. Holiday turned into the parking lot and pulled to a stop. Good luck at Bartley, she said. Don't wait until somebody else gets killed before you text me again, yeah? Holiday <laughs> 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 is so funny, though. Yeah, she is. I won't, I promise, leaning over the gear shift to give her a hug. Her hair smelled like tea and like salt water, slapped against the side of my face. Grand Larceline next time, how about? <laughs> Larson, maybe, she smiled. Take care, Michael. I was one of the last people to make it onto the ferry, and it was already crowded when I climbed on board. I made my way back onto the uppermost deck, the sun warm on the back of my neck. Most of the benches were occupied. Then I found a place to stand by the railing, the engine humming through the soles of my sneakers. I watched as Holiday pulled out of the parking lot, her hand thrust through the window in a wave like she knew I'd be looking. It occurred to me that, all things considered, I probably should have felt a lot worse than I did. We barely left the port when I felt the familiar buzz of my phone in my back pocket. I dug it out, fully expecting a text from my mom about where she should meet me back in Boston. My heart tripped in my chest when I saw the name on the screen, Greater. I know I'm probably the last person you want to hear from, she grinned, but we need to talk. The ferry pitched underneath me, or at least that's what it felt like. I gripped the railing with my free hand to keep from stumbling, though the sea was resolutely calm. I hit the icon to dial Greer's number like a reflux, and she <clears throat> picked up almost before it rang. I didn't know if you'd call, she said, instead of hello. Of course I called, I said, trying to ignore both the twist in my gut at the sound of her voice and the knowledge that she wasn't actually surprised at all. That was how our relationship had always worked. I came when she beckoned. She wanted me, I showed up. She asked me to do something and I did it, no matter the consequences. I glanced back in the direction of the vineyard, the lush green island receding in the distance. Rear, I said, trying to keep my voice even. What's going on? What? what? You left with the clear cliffhanger? Yeah. Hold on, hold on. What? Oh, now, there's was a... Greer like an ex-girlfriend or yeah. was she a friend? What? Okay, so I guess there's another one. The Tim Watt House is the next one. Wait, what? Yeah, this is just like, I think it's one of three, two or three was books. It th we, this was the first book for, right? Yeah, yeah, this one was the first So then what's That's the second? That's like a kitchen. Now we got to read Tim Watt uh, House. Oh, the book club canon. Oh, wait, wait. What's one? Is this the preview? Do you want to read the preview? Uh, wait, so wait. No, I'd rather, well, just so. Hemlock House? Maybe we have time after we can read the preview. Or we can just read it together. Wait, what? Or a part of it. 
Acknowledgement or which one? Um, after. Is there a fact that seems relevant to mention before? I oh, wait. It's not like oh, must. Why did they got to do that? Uh, <laughs> Something's going on with the career. Yeah, but, but at least now we know. To Probably some, I wonder if it has to do with the accident that they got into when he Probably. Found. Maybe, yeah. but that's weird. What I want to know is why 80, why Ray's and the detective stopped or had 80 and Meredith in the squad. Well, I could see Meredith because she got caught with the money stealing that, that stuff. But 80 shouldn't be in the squad car because I suppose that, and plus there's no proof that, that 80 actually pushed Greg. Well, no, they said in the beginning that it was to help, the, it, was help it was to help out Meredith. But no, because, I'm saying like Greg, 80 pushed Greg because, because Greg looked like he was, he was to protect uh, Meredith from, from Greg, from Greg. So she pushed him from behind. So where was the proof like that she actually did it? For 80 or yeah. Meredith? Uh, 80. 80 pushed Greg and that's how he died. He, that's how he got the cut. So how did, I mean. No, Meredith. How do they know, how do the cop, don't you need, so, sir, can't, I, don't you need more than circumstantial evidence to convict someone? Or well, no, someone because Meredith something? already had the cuts. Because 80 confessed the thing, right? Oh, and they have witnesses. Yeah, they have witnesses, yeah. 80. 80s. Well, why? 80s dumb. Why would she confess? Because be, obviously people are going to, I know well, it's too much for her and she wanted to be done with it. But well, but she confessed because like, she knew that yeah. Meredith what wasn't going to was say gonna anything. Happen? Of course she's going to go to prison right away. But Meredith didn't say anything. She wasn't going to give it up. So that's why 80 broke and pretty much said, this is what I know. Because she was trying to, the so she just wanted to deal with the consequences. Mm -hmm. Instead of living that. Keep that secret. I feel like this is just. And it was probably guilt was probably weighing on her. Yeah. Wow. Dang it. I wish we had known that because now Hemlock has. Now we got no more. I thought those. I guess it's not the last book club meeting. <laughs> read it. not, it's fun we could read it on our own. We could, or maybe just discuss it after. Or we could just do like videos. Do. Uh, but just then where have, do like, we once a week have like a uh, messenger video on messenger but video where we read it's fine where you have the internet at your house don't yeah, you or i don't have the book so yeah you'll be able to so yeah we'll we'll have to find that or we mm -hmm. or yeah we'll it, figure so. it out if there maybe there's yeah. gonna be a deal on it or i'll, I'll keep my eye out yeah. for deals on books anyway should we eat them? sure yeah. sure because do you have do you okay. have the book cassie no i don't there you go okay i'm gonna pop that was